But first, the big fish of this offseason, at least the biggest fish that was not guaranteed to come back to his team that he played for last year, because let's be real, LeBron's obviously coming back to the Lakers, was Paul George and the Philadelphia 76ers, or Paul George the Clippers, better said. So Paul George signed a contract with the Los Angeles Clippers, the max deal, the four-year max deal with the, I'm sorry, with the, the Philadelphia 76ers, rather, four-year extension or four-year contract with Philadelphia. And first of all, it's a perfect fit for him. And the great thing about Paul George, one of the reasons I've been such a fan of him as a player over the years is I don't think there's any team in the league where he'd be a bad fit for. Or let me rephrase that, a weird fit for. Like LeBron James is arguably the greatest basketball player ever. There's some teams that it just wouldn't really work. LeBron has to play on ball. If you went to an organization that already had a point guard, how would that really work itself out? It, it wouldn't, wouldn't feel quite right. Paul George is a plug-and-play guy. He's a great shooter. He can score off the dribble consistently and effectively. He's an excellent perimeter defender. Not as good as he used to be, but can still defend at a high level. Uh, you keep in mind the fact that despite dealing with injuries over the course of his career, particularly in the last half decade, Paul George played the most games this past season with the Clippers, most games he's played in the NBA in the last half decade. So Paul George showed he was healthy last year, could still be effective on the defensive end, still an all-star caliber player, did average in what was a, down season for him, 22 points per game and what was yet another tumultuous season for the Clippers. More on sort of the Clippers, Kawhi, Paul George era at the end of the show because I did want to sort of hone in and, and, and wrap a bow on what was a, a five-year disaster. But to me, the story in this is not Paul George because if the Philadelphia 76ers, who I believe to be bare minimum the third best team in the Eastern Conference today, Boston, we saw they brought back Derek White and about 30 minutes ago signed Jason Tatum to the biggest contract in NBA history. We can touch on that uh, throughout the show as we get more information on that. But in terms of the Eastern Conference, the race for the East, Boston's the, the, the I don't want to say the clear front runner because other teams in the East have gotten better. But Boston's the front runner, followed by a close second and third in no particular order, the Knicks and the Sixers. If the Philadelphia 76ers season goes up in smoke, be it in the second round because they're Truly to goodness, not going to get bouncing round one again with this group. Uh, but if they get bouncing round two, if they get bouncing the Eastern Conference Finals gets Boston, obviously we've got to see how it plays itself out. we got to see if there's any injuries that that take shape and affects their, their overall performance for that series. However, think about this. If we think about Philadelphia and why they might fail, who would we blame? Are we going to, are we going to blame Tyrese Maxey? The kid who just averaged 25 a game and is getting better just got an extension or a contract uh, by from the Sixers this offseason. Congrats to him. Uh, has a couple 50 burgers on his resume. Is one of the great ascending young players in the NBA. We're going we're gonna to blame Maxi after what he did in that series a year ago against the Knicks? We're going to blame Paul George. Oh, Paul George. Uh, Philadelphia's been <laughs> failing to get to the conference finals before Paul George got there. Speaking of conference finals, Paul George has been in three of them. So he has experience at that level. Are we going to blame Nick Nurse? You know, won a championship in the last five years. How's Toronto look without him? Are we going to blame Kelly Oubre? <laughs> I mean, we start to go down the list. Andre Drummond, Eric Gordon, the couple last two guys I mentioned they added in free agency. No, it's going to fall on Joel Embiid. And I don't think that's remotely debatable. Because the fact of the matter is, anytime LeBron's got knocked out of a playoff series, blame LeBron. Anytime KD gets knocked out of playoff series, blame KD, blame Steph, we blame Giannis and Jokic, even though Jokic, I thought, had a great series against the Timberwolves in the second round. Blew a 20-point lead in Game 7. Uh, he's got to be held to some account, right? The main thing with Joel Embiid that I feel like I am in the ultra minority on is the fact that he has about as bad... It's not James Harden bad. That's a whole different level that I'm not sure any superstar in NBA history has ever reached. It's it's pretty bad. But it's not far off. It's within the same area code as what James Harden has consistently done or better said, not done in the postseason. When you think about Joel B, what do you think of in the postseason? The quiet game when he shot against his team? Remember the game seven against the Atlanta Hawks? The Trey Young-led Atlanta Hawks who... Knocked off Philadelphia in a game seven in Philadelphia. We think about the fact that he had a 3 2 lead on Boston a year ago when Tatum wasn't having a good series 
at all, Harden, for his playoff failures, delivered a game one and a game four for the ages. Philadelphia's got a game six on their home floor and B disappears. Tatum goes berserk in the fourth quarter and then proceeds to drop 50, 51 to be exact, on Philadelphia in game seven. And Embiid fails to register double-digit rebounds at seven feet, two inches tall. Are we going to forget the fact that Embiid's field goal percentage in the fourth quarter against the Knicks in the series was, I don't know, in the 20s? See, we give the other superstars a, a, a certain level and a fair level to a degree. Sometimes it goes over, over, the, over the top, but a fair level of criticism if their team gets bounced. With Joel Embiid, well, he's hurt. Well, funny, I didn't hear that like, excuse for Steph Curry in the 2016 finals. Didn't hear that excuse at all. By the way, I'm not one of those who make it because Steph had some great games prior to that, but prior to that finals. That's on him. I don't hear that excuse for other guys when they're nicked up and Kawhi Leonard had some injuries in 2020 in the bubble when the Clippers blew a 3-1 lead to the Denver Nuggets. Didn't hear that. Didn't hear that then when Kawhi was beat up. We consistently give Joel Embiid the injury pass. Well, Bryce, he's always hurt in the playoffs. Then that's what I have to judge him on. We can talk about the fact that the Knicks, I'm sorry, not the Knicks, that the Sixers badly struggled in that series against the Knicks in the non-Embiid minutes. And that is an absolutely objectively true fact. You don't have to worry about that now. You got Maxie. You got Paul George. Andre Drummond. When you're off the floor, here comes Andre Drummond to fill those minutes. And Andre Drummond isn't, you know, Pistons Andre Drummond, who was, you know, getting that team to playoffs for what it's worth. But good, as good of a backup center as you could have in the NBA. That's a really, really good backup center. Eric Gordon, spot-up shooter. Kelly Uber is a good player. It's on you, Joel. I feel like I'm the only human being alive outside of the city of Philadelphia and really even in the... National media, podcasters, fans, the whole bit that consistently and always reminds anyone that I can, anyone who will listen, that Joel Embiid, of every individual who's won the greatest award in the NBA, individual award that is, is the NBA most valuable player. Joel Embiid's won that award before, ladies and gentlemen, and he's never been to a conference finals. Only MVP who can say that. No excuses now. If Paul George is your third option, a dude who led the average Pacers, let's be real, folks, that George Hill, David West, uh, Roy Hibbert, uh, you know, led those Pacers teams to some conference finals. And one year took the Heatles to a game seven. And what was probably the best Miami Heat team ever in 2013. Took that team to a game seven, if my memory serves me correct. The year the Clippers made their only conference finals in franchise history. Kawhi didn't get him there. Kawhi helped him get to the second round and got a couple of W's against the Jazz in games three and four. But Kawhi goes down. Everybody turns. Hey, Paul George, what you going to do? Relax, guys. I'm going to get you out to the first Western Conference Finals your sorry franchise has ever been to. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of the city of Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love, that's your third option. No excuses now. If it's the injury excuse, again, we haven't given other guys that pass in the past. Embiid, Maxi, Paul George, to me, undoubtedly the best big three in the NBA. I don't hear anything about anybody, any other. I don't. Denver, no. Lakers, no. Dallas, listen, the Clay edition is good, but no. It's the best th big three in basketball. They've got a championship coach. They've got a good bench. They've got a tremendous general manager in Daryl Morey, who is the whole reason Paul George is even there, because he dealt Harden and got, by the way, didn't only get assets, got a bunch of cap space in order to sign Paul George. So it's a great move for Philadelphia. It, absol it absolutely makes them better. And one can make a case, the biggest threat to Boston win the Eastern Conference. And so, listen, kudos to the, to the 76ers for being able to thread the needle, starting with the Harden trade and gambling on the fact that the Clippers don't sign Paul George to the max extension. They don't. And all of a sudden, a guy who's a multi-time All-Star has led his team to three conference finals in his career. Number three option. And let's be real, in what was a tumultuous tenure in, in Clipperland, all the stars that came in and out of that franchise, Paul George is the most reliable one, if we're being honest. Both ends of the floor in terms of availability. He dealt with his injuries. But by and large, when you need Paul George, he was there. Only conference finals in Clippers history, led by that guy. Great addition for Philadelphia, but the pressure now, it's on Embiid. It, it is on Embiid. There's no question about it. And I hope. We go into next season with that in mind.
Thanks so much for watching the show on YouTube, and be sure to go click that big red subscribe button and check out the other clips and full shows from Carving It Up Live as well as our other incredible content creators here on the Grid Network.